Hi everyone, uh, I'm Adrian. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm a, a contractor under the Gnome STF grant. Uh, I also work on uh, Gnome OS. Uh, I try to combine the two when I can. Um, and uh, for, for Gnome OS, we're building a, a, a new installer and it's built on systemd repart and I wanna talk about why and how and whether that works and, and so on. So first let's, uh, just a little motivation as to why uh, Gnome OS needs an installer, uh, a new one, what it is and kind of what our goals are with it. So for the STF grant, uh, one of our um, kind of missions is to build better development tools uh, for Gnome. And uh, as some of my colleagues have given talks and will give more talks here uh, today, uh, we've really focused on, uh, on Gnome OS for that uh, because it allows us to use things like SysExt and uh, uh, we can uh, integrate it with our CI pipeline and, and do all these fancy things that developers can then use to test uh, bleeding edge versions of Gnome or even uh, unfinished pull requests uh, on their machines. Uh, and to do this, they need Gnome OS. And uh, unfortunately, Gnome OS right now on real hardware is a bit uh, unobtainable. Uh, so people are kind of stuck with virtual machines and not everyone wants to do development on a virtual machine. Uh, so all these fancy new developer tools that we're building and we're investing money into are uh, not being uh, utilized uh, just yet. And uh, one of the reasons is uh, Gnome OS is difficult to obtain. So we wanted to build a new installer for Gnome OS uh, to make that easier for people. Uh, so here's some of the design goals we've got. Uh, first of all, in, in standard GNOME fashion, it should just kind of work. Uh, you shouldn't have to think about, um, you know, what partitioning will look like and, and um, how to set up the system to work correctly. Um, and because we're image-based uh, and we're using all of uh, the fancy system D um, uh, layout uh, stuff, uh, we actually kind of have to be automatic partitioning. We actually can't really allow manual partitioning as much uh, because Gnome OS is designed around having um, like at least six partitions, uh, basically two copies of the OS, the Verity data for it, and the user data. Um, so uh, we need to figure out a way to fit these six partitions onto essentially any disk layout we, we were given. And we need to do this with dual boot support. And I think dual boot is incredibly important here uh, because uh, our developers are going to be installing a very uh, unfinished experimental, possibly even the latest uh, Git main branch of every single OS component essentially uh, to test with. And uh, they're not gonna want to daily drive this. Uh, without dual boot support, uh, if they wanna test on real hardware, uh, they would have to dedicate an entire drive and in practice that translates to an entire laptop to do this development and uh, that's a very high bar to cross. Uh, we've actually run into this. We've already had uh, GNOME developers come to us and ask, hey, how do I get GNOME OS set up so I can test all of this fancy new SysX stuff you're working on? Um, and our answer would be, you gotta wipe your laptop. And they said, oh, I'll just wait for, for that to not be a requirement anymore. Um, all right, so what is systemd repart? Um, it's a kind of smart partitioning tool. Uh, the gist is that uh, a distribution uh, or a vendor uh, specifies what partitions they need to exist for the OS to work. Uh, and then repart kind of intelligently looks at the layout of your disk that currently exists and does whatever it can to uh, make those partitions exist. Um, and it, it's really automatic in that way. It's optimized for uh, discoverable partitions, so it's very well aware of all of the uh, systemd, AB partitioning, uh, things that we rely on very heavily in Gnome OS. Um, and it's already used throughout uh, systemd and related projects, like Mako SI uh, uses it to actually generate uh, images of an OS from scratch. Um, and it's also used by systemd on first boot, 
to maybe create additional partitions that are missing if you have maybe an embedded kind of deployment where uh, you install a very small rootFS and it, you need it to be grown and, and reconfigured on first boot. Um, so our thinking was, well, if it's being used in, to create the images and to modify them at runtime, maybe they could be used to deploy them as well. And kind of the superpower of systemd repart is that it's non-destructive. Um, so by default, uh, it can be configured to be destructive, but by default it will try its hardest to not damage uh, any existing partitions it finds. It'll try to fit what it needs to fit, but if it, if it can, it won't uh, actually damage existing installations of other Linux distros, uh, which is necessary for us to do uh, dual boot. Um, basically, if you already are running Fedora or Ubuntu or something like that, uh, you can just make some space and then uh, repart will do, uh, will fit the, the, the static definitions into that free space and you can actually dual boot that way. So uh, here's kind of the plan of what the new Gnome OS installer would look and work like. Um, and I'm gonna put some pseudocode up on screen so don't like reference this, go read the documentation. Uh, so uh, any distribution wanting to use the installer can, can do it like this. Uh, basically you create partition definitions uh, for the partitions that you need to exist. So in Gnome OS it would be the six partitions I mentioned earlier. So for example, uh, you need a, a slash user tree for your, um, for the actual OS uh, contents. Um, and you can actually configure repart to do things like uh, copy uh, off of your install media, uh, copy the user tree onto the target, um, which is a quite convenient because repart will not only do partitioning for you, but it'll actually deploy a vast majority of the image for you. Um, and this is also where you put, uh, kind of give yourself some leeway on the space that you need. So for example, that size min equals four gigabyte. Uh, our images aren't actually four gigabytes in size, they're closer to two. Um, but it, it's a way to give ourselves some leeway for maybe over the next five or 10 years, our OS will double in size. We will be able to continue giving updates to it. Um, Here's another example partition for, uh, for where we put the UKIs um, over on the right. Um, again, this is pseudocode, this isn't real syntax. Um, basically, UKIs go into one of two different partitions uh, and uh, uh, based on the, the bootloader specification. Uh, so uh, repart, actually, we recently added functionality for this. Uh, can decide which partition to go with depending on what the existing layout is on disk. Uh, uh, so yeah, so the second definition is basically saying uh, the place where I put the UKIs should be at least a gigabyte in size. And uh, again, you're gonna have more definitions, uh, probably an empty partition for a second slash user. You'll just allocate the space for it but you won't actually put any content in there and you would label it underscore empty for sysupdate to then yeah, you know work with it later. Uh, Verity, we can either copy it or we can generate it. Repart can generate it on the fly uh, if that's uh, more convenient, uh, and so on. So these would be static definitions. They're not generated by code. These are shipped in user by the distribution that's using, that's uh, trying to use our installer here. So then the installer uh, at runtime would enumerate uh, disks. Uh, and uh, right now we're not using uh, any system D thing to enumerate disks. We're actually talking to U disks. Uh, so, uh, but repart uh, also uh, would be deciding whether these disks are suitable for installation. And we do this by like for each disk, we actually go and uh, talk to repart. Um, and we would do this over varlink, uh, but to make it make sense on the slides, I'll just show the command line arguments. Uh, so uh, yeah, basically we tell uh, repart uh, to look at those static definitions, so repart knows which partitions we want to, we need to have. And then we can say dry run equals yes, which basically says do all of your math, figure out how to partition the disk, but don't actually do any partitioning. Uh, and then we tell it which disk we're interested in, and repart will actually give back um, a, a description of what changes it would make and then we can use that to decide if the disk is suitable. 
so for example, uh, with some mock data, the, the sand mug SSD up at the top, uh, Repart would essentially tell us that there's 128 gigabytes used and there's 700 something uh, gigabytes available that we could successfully fit our NomeOS image in. Um, and it does actually simulate what it, that would fit. So if, if Repart says that it fits, it will fit. Um, so let's assume that the user does pick that first SSD. Um, and Repart, because Repart told us that there are some existing partitions on disk already that it would not touch, uh, we actually could prompt the user, and this is uh, what the GNOME OS installer would do. Uh, it basically says, hey, there's some data here. Uh, we can set it up as a dual boot for you. So install to free space would uh, basically dual boot with whatever was already taking up that first 128 gigabytes. Or you could choose to wipe the whole disk if you want. And when you hit that start installation button, again, all the installer does is it just talks to Repart again. Again, passing in those static definitions. This time, dry run is no. We actually want Repart to do the partitioning. Um, this is uh, dash dash empty is what actually lets you uh, disable the um, um, non-destructive. Uh, you can actually make it destructive by passing in empty equals force. And basically you're telling Repart to ignore the existing partition table and just create a new one and overwrite everything on disk. And um, yeah, it's about that easy. And then Repart uh, will uh, create the partitions as you describe them. Uh, and because in the user definition we actually said we want to copy the data over, it will copy the data over as well, give us progress information, uh, which we, we then show with a nice progress bar in the installer. And uh, we're not quite done installing the OS yet. We just have to uh, copy in the UKI. And we can't do this uh, in Repart because Repart isn't necessarily the one that created the, the, the boot partition. Uh, it might have already existed, maybe you already had Fedora installed, and uh, you're reusing the same EFI system partition, for example. So we'd have to do that out of band. Then we install a bootloader, and then we're done. Dual boot is that easy with Repart. Um, so uh, we got to implementing this plan, and uh, yeah, uh, a couple months ago when I submitted this talk, uh, there was going to be a nice demo here, uh, basically showing all of this working uh, in, uh, in GNOME OS, but we're not there yet. Um, but let's see what we did manage to uh, achieve in that time. So uh, the actual GUI app, the skeleton of the GUI app anyway, is like mostly done. It's uh, in a Git repo in, in uh, the GNOME GitLab. Uh, it just uses mock data because there's no actual backend for it yet. Uh, the decision making about where UKIs go, either the EFI system partition or X bootloader, uh, this is implemented and it got merged like a week or two ago. So it will be in 257. Um, this feature is useful outside of uh, installers as well. Uh, I mean, Repart in its uh, traditional configuration could also do this to uh, decide whether or not it will create a slash home partition. So maybe if you're dual booting and you already have a separate slash home partition, Repart could choose to make a smaller root partition for your OS, for your second OS installation, and then share slash home with whatever other OS you have installed. And uh, the Varlink service, because uh, I mentioned we would talk to Repart over Varlink, uh, Repart doesn't actually speak Varlink yet. Uh, so uh, this is what I was implementing most recently. So that's just work in progress. It's not even in a pull request yet. So uh, what are some of the difficulties we've run into uh, that weren't necessarily expected? Uh, first of all, uh, the, the GUI app is written in Rust uh, with GTKRS, and Rust's Varlink client uh, turns out to be quite in not great shape. Um, so uh, actually, uh, coincidentally, there's uh, another uh, developer for another distribution called TauOS uh, they are actually doing exactly the same thing that we are for GNOME OS. Uh, they're using Repart for their OS installer for their image-based system. And uh, they are also using Rust and they would like to uh, look into fixing this. So we'll see how that works out. Um, okay, and then I mentioned uh, installing systemd boot. Uh, 
There's no Varlink interface for that either. Uh, I'm hoping it would be easy to add one, uh, but uh, I haven't looked into it yet. Uh, file system resizing. Uh, this was an unexpected blow. Uh, repart repartitions the disk, but it doesn't actually touch the file systems inside ever. Um, which uh, I suppose is, is good in some ways to prevent accidental damage to file systems. Uh, but it's bad for our use case because when we resize a partition, like for example the X bootloader partition, let's say we have the space to make it bigger and we want it to be bigger, we can't then go and actually grow the partition inside of there to make it big enough for us to uh, place our EFI system partition on it. Uh, our, sorry, our UKI on it. And um, this is an issue we discussed at the image based summit. Uh, the solution may be to just teach repart to start actually growing uh, partitions on its own, uh, sorry, growing file systems inside of partitions on its own whenever it grows the partition itself. Um, I hand waved over copying in the UKI. Uh, that's not actually trivial either. Uh, we can't, uh, uh, originally I wanted to do this in repart itself. Uh, but again, repart is dealing with existing partitions at that point, which would mean repart would have to learn not only how to resize partitions, it would actually have to start mounting them and then copying files in and uh, this would very quickly become fragile and difficult. So, uh, I think I, I talked to uh, Dan of uh, Make OSI and uh, the, a solution we came up with was to actually have a boot CTL or the Varlink service for boot CTL to actually deploy the uh, unified kernel image for us as well. Um, so that's an avenue to explore. Uh, shim. Uh, shim is not built for dual boot. Uh, it's built for um, individual vendors having their own shim that only boots their own thing. And uh, I've spoken to some of the shim people about this. Uh, I don't know what a solution will look like. I mean, systemd upstream doesn't have a great story for shim in the first place. Um, and we do want shim for GNOME OS because, uh, again, we don't, re we don't really want our developers to have to go into their UEFI and possibly turn off secure boot or, or, or do things like that if, if we can get away with not making them do that. So uh, I don't know what that's going to look like. If you have ideas, uh, please come talk to me. I'm very happy to talk about it. And uh, finally, the biggest difficulty we ran into is um, dual boot's not actually supported by uh, discoverable uh, part, like uh, image-based, DPS-based uh, distros if they can't do Etsy FS tab, which GNOMOS cannot do uh, because we create our root FS and Etsy on first boot after the OS has been installed, not during install time. Uh, so um, this is also something we discussed at the image based summit uh, pretty extensively and I think we have a solution uh, which would involve actually letting distributions label ownership over uh, DPS uh, based partitions. So you could actually identify uh, which distribution owns which uh, partition that's a user tree, for example. Or a rootfs, you could actually say, oh, this is a Fedora rootfs versus a, a GNOMOS rootfs. And that would allow us to uh, pretty seamlessly uh, support dual boot. So yet, uh, I'm going to uh, propose something for the UAPI group uh, in the coming days or weeks about this. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of where we are right now. I'd like to thank the Sovereign Tech Fund uh, for funding the work and the GNOME Foundation for administering that. And I'd like to thank the organizers uh, who got us the grant, uh, Sonny and Tobias. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to take questions. Yeah. Thank you, Adrian. And I already saw one question. So do you see GNOME OS completely only as a development acceleration tool or is it going to be a distribution that should ship? I personally see it as the latter and I'm going to be writing blog posts about it but that's in no way an official position of GNOME or the GNOME community or the GNOME foundation. Okay, so do you have plans to like um, 
I think this has potential to do something interesting with stuff like DM Verity and so on to be like a more trusted root of S. Um, do you plan to work in this direction or is this like far off for you? This is already implemented. Oh. So Nome OS is already image based, uh, DM Verity, uh, basically everything Leonard described in his blog post uh, two years ago. You said that you have issues with uh, growing the file system after growing the partition itself. Mm -hmm. You didn't mention it, so I'll ask about it. Have you had a look at systemd growfs? Because that's meant for growing the file system. Yeah, that's for growing devices when they're mounted at boot uh, by uh, systemd. Um, I did take a quick look at that. I'm not sure I could adapt it to. Um, basically mount the partition and then immediately grow it and then dismount it, something like that. I don't know. Uh, grow, the, part of the issue with GrowFS is that it works when the partition is online. Uh, actually, all GrowFS does is it makes an I.O. control to say, hey, kernel, please grow this file system, uh, which is great in some respects, but actually it doesn't solve the problem with the X bootloader. And the X bootloader is the only uh, the partition we actually would share with another uh, we would actually try to grow it for Gnome OS specifically uh, because X bootloader is VFAT and the kernel does not know how to resize VFAT. So uh, we could shell out. There are tools to resize VFAT partitions offline, which I'm considering teaching Repart to use. Further questions? That seems not to be the case. Then another round of applause for Adrian. Thank you.